So now to make motion graphics easier, let's use something called effectors. So to use effectors, first of all, I'm going to have a MoGraph object. And for that, let me use something like a torus right here. Let me change the size of the torus into something like 30 centimeter right here. Let me press S. So I'm going to go over here and then let's say I'm not going to work around with the ring segments, but let me decrease the pipe radius just like this. So I'm going to add in a MoGraph to this. So I'm going to add in a cloner just like this. And then uh, I have a copy already. So I'm going to change the mode into grid just like this and then increase the number of the objects just like that. So you got a lot of objects just like that in a grid line like fashion. So I don't need uh, much of these. So let me have something like around five, five, five right here. All right. So just that much. I can decrease the size because I do not want it to much of it. So I'm just going to decrease the size, uh, not the count, the size. I want to compress it all together. And I want it something like in a sphere, uh, like setting just like that. So I do not want something uh, like around uh, like that. So I have it just like that over here. So you can see that I got a lot of rings. So that's just a lot. So I'm going to have five by five by five, uh, just like that. Maybe seven by seven by seven. I do not want to go too low. So there you go. I got a spear like shape right here. Let me just increase this inside and there you go. I got my MoGraph just like that. Now what I want to use uh, is something called effectors. So I'm going to go into my MoGraph right here. I can also bring this out and over here you have something called effectors right over here. I'm going to just bring this out over here. You can see that there are a lot of effectors. Let me just bring this out again because it's not actually coming out. So I'm going to go over here, effectors. And there you go, this is my effectors right there. So there are a lot of effectors that you can work with. And what this does is it makes motion graphics much more easier to work with. So I got my cloner, I can bring this up, down and so forth. I also can animate, but effectors make it much more easier. Let me show you how. So I'm going to go over here and to my effectors. There's a lot of things that you can work with. So there's plane, there's delay, there's random, there's uh, something like like uh, over here, for example, that step. These are all the things that actually help out to animate everything quite well. So let me drag in something called plane right here. So I just clicked on plane and it appeared over here. So let us arrange it at the bottom so that it's easier for us to work with. So if I were to press cloner, uh, click on cloner and go to effectors. You can see that plane is already here. So I cannot, uh, don't have to do anything to it. So if I were to go to the plane right here, you can see that there are options right here. So I can change the width. You can see that this is how I can change it. So it is affecting everything right now, which does not actually make any sense right here. So I have to use something called fall off. So I'm going to go to fall off right here. And over in the linear field, I can select the type of fall off that I want to use. So in my case, let me just use something like a box field. You can use anything that you want. And over here, once you use it, you can see that this actually affects uh, only the areas uh, where, where the box is. So you can see this. So I can expand and uh, contract this out. So let me just expand the box just like that expand the box over here, just like that. And it only affects the area of box, which actually works around with that. So I can also go to the inner feel of the box right here and then uh, work around with those. So let me just go over here. And then over here, these are the box feel right here, which you can actu um, actually work around with. So these are it. So now that's it. So if I were to go over here, uh, into the direction you can work around with scale. Let me just go over here. That's the inner uh, outlet that I'm looking for. So you can see that you can work around with the strength. So if you want more of a softer approach, you can work around with the inner offset right here. So now if I were to move the box, so you can, this is already the inner outset. So now you can see that as I mo move the box along, it only affects the areas with uh, well, within the boxes like that. So let me just increase this in size uh, so that it affects more area. And over here, you can see that it only affects the area with it. So let me just keep it somewhere over here, just like that. Uh, let me just select the box field itself as well. Increase the inner offset right here, just like this. 
uh, so that it affects more area just like that now what I'm going to do is inside of the plane uh, let me see its effector particles right here you can increase and decrease the strength it is there there are some other parameters that I can work with so you can change where this actually goes just like this you can change where this actually goes so let me say something like 100 centimeter right here and you can also move it a bit forward or backward depending on what you want you can move it towards the side just like that as well so let me just keep this on zero you can also work around with the scale for example so you can go over here into the scale and you can work around with the scale of each of the object as it passes through the effector as you can see just like this so it actually changes its scale over there so let me just press zero over here and i want something like a uniform scale so i'm just going to bring the scale down as it enters the effector so let me just press minus one right here so that actually brings it down to zero so you can see that it actually changes the effector just like this so i want it to really affect it out so you can see that the, the sum of the particles are still there let me just increase this in size uh, all right so increase this in size so everything disappears all right so let me just increase this in size move it aside and you can see that this is how it works now so everything disappears into thin air or you can make them appear over here and this is how you can use the effector in one way so now you can also animate this out as you can see we can add in keyframes to almost all of the things right here so let us start by adding something like a 30 frame keyframe right here not too long so I'm just gonna go over here and then on the plane um, on the box field let me add in a keyframe so I'm going to go over to coordinates right here so I'm gonna add it add a keyframe to X coordinate and we're going to learn more about keyframing in further lessons so I'm gonna go at the end and drag it out over here and then click that as a way so if I were to play it you can see that the animation actually plays around just like that there you go this is what I want so as you can see so this is the animation that is being played with the effector right there I can also work around with other elements over here in the effector so you can go over here into parameters and then there's scale there's absolute scale and so forth that's also position that you can work with and so forth so you can also have uniform transformation let me just move around and you can have a bit of a U transformation there's other parameters that you can work around with as well so it's also absolute scale transform effector object and so forth so you can also work around with the uh, rot rotation so let me just change around the rotation as well so let me change the rotation you can see that the rotation is changing just like that over here and there you go that is how everything works out now now as you move the reflector you can see that the rotation is there um, are there as well as if the uh, the objects are falling off from the sky it actually works out just like that so that is one way of using uh, the effectors so I can add in multiple effectors as well so this is one of the effector that I actually added in the other effector that you may want to add in is delay which as adds in um, an asin effect to it so I'm going to drag in the delay on to the bottom right here after the box feel and let's go to the cloner right here it's not added here so let me just drag in the DK over here so now as I play it so it actually it adds in a smooth end to it as you can see it's much more smoother than what you have so I can also go to the delay right here and work around with its uh, parameters right here so you can see that there's position uh, scale and rotation applied to it if I were to go to effector you can see in the mode uh, you can also go to spring which gives a type of a bouncy effect so if I were to play this you can see that there's a bit of a bounce once I add it in and it, it looks much more wonderful if you ask me so you can also increase the strength of the bounce right here so you can see that it is really slow now or you can bring it down just like that so you can see that it is much more shuttle so let me just bring it to somewhere around 60 percent and let's see the effect you can see that it is quite bouncy uh, to your liking okay let me just bring this down to around 30 percent i guess that would be okay because i do not want too much of a bounciness there you go it is much more there uh, so there's parameters as well uh, deformers as well as you can see and for you can also adjust 
fall off to this one, but we already adjusted the fall off in the beginning itself. So I do not want to work around more with it. So you can see that I added in a delay right here. Let's also uh, add in something like uh, a push apart right here. So let me just bring this down and bring the push apart on to the cloner right here. So just bring down the uh, push apart on the cloner and you can see that immediately there's a change. So if I were to play it, you can see that everything is being pushed apart. You can also control the strength of the push apart right here. But anyways, let me just go to push apart and let's see what we can do with the factor settings. So you can change the iterations just like this. You can change the iteration of the push apart. You can decrease the radius of the push apart. Let me not push apart too far, but just a bit, just like this. And you can also uh, scale apart over here, just like that, along X axis or along Y axis as well. Let me just use the default one for this one and decrease the strength a bit. But so now let's see how that looks like. So it pushes out it out a bit as well as the animation is actually playing. So now let me uh, increase the radius a bit and let's see how it actually goes out. So you can see that everything is being pushed apart just like that. There you go. So another thing I might want to add is the um, random uh, effector. So let me just bring this down again onto the cloner effects. Let me bring in random. So you can see that now the animation is much more randomly organized just like that. Really looks fluid and wonderful. So let me go to random right here and let's see the option that it provides. So you can have random position right here, just like this. You can have random position. You can have random scale onto the object, as you can see. Let me just go to uniform scale and then increase the scale just like that. So you have random bit of a scale, scale right here. Also, you can have random rotation on each axis over here, just like that. You can have a bunch of random rotation. So over here, you can see that this is the random. You can also uh, work with other parameters if you want to. So now if I were to play it, you can see that everything is arranged at a random level, just like this. And it really looks wonderful. So all of this was done without having to manually add in any keyframe, but by just by utilizing some effector options inside of Cinema 4D. And this is why Cinema 4D is very, very popular for motion graphics um, applications. So this is how you can use effectors to effectively make motion graphics animation e easy inside of Cinema 4D. So if you guys learn something as always, and as always, please like, comment, share, and subscribe.